Hey guys, Dizlife Mark here, and I want to tell you all about the official travel partner here at Chip and Company. Let our good friend Sarah at Destination to Travel help you plan your next Disney vacation. Sarah specializes in planning dream vacations for your family. She's an authorized Disney vacation planner, and she can help with every step of your magical vacation. The best thing is that her services are 100% free. Want to travel beyond Disney? Sarah has you covered there too. Want to find out more? Fill out a trip request form over at the website at Chip & Co. or email her directly at sarahsolberg at d2travel.com. What are you waiting for? Start planning that dream vacation today. Email her at sarahsolberg at d2travel.com. Please stand clear of the doors. Por favor, manténganse alejado de las puertas. Welcome, foolish mortals. Greetings, program. Amigos, amigos down there. It is me up here. Howdy, folks. Please keep your hands, arms, and legs inside the train and remain seated at all times. That's work, pal. Well, we have one of those new talking machines. Now that is something. We know what our goals are. We know what we hope to accomplish. And believe me, it's the most exciting and challenging assignment we've ever tackled. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Diz Life Podcast. Thank you so much for being a part of our Disney lives here on the Chip and Company Podcast Network. My name is Mark Valentine, and I am the host of Diz Life Podcast. And join us weekly as we discuss the very best of Disney parks, resorts, dining, and beyond. Don't forget to smash that subscribe button to access more incredible audio content right here at the Chip and Company Podcast Network. And a reminder to head over to chipandco.com for the latest and the most uplifting headlines from across Disney parks around the world. Special shout out, as always, to the patrons of this podcast program, the members of our Patreon page who have special access, bonus content, and much, much more. Support this radio program by visiting us at patreon.com forward slash Dislife Podcast. Before we get on to today's topic, let us welcome in, as always, to this incredible co- show, my amazing co host, Phillies fan. And the savior of the known universe, the honorary guardian of the galaxy, Greg, the Disney fanatic. Greg, welcome back to the, the studio, man. Anything incredible happening outside of the Major League Baseball playoffs right now? Uh, hoy hoy, Mark Valentine. And uh, apparently your speech pattern is uh, doing really well. <laughs> Why is it always on my intro is the stumble? You're like, what am I going to say about Greg today? Yeah. Uh, is there anything outside of the Major League Baseball playoff bubble right now? Is there? There's nothing. There's nothing. I mean, the Flyers, there's hockey. I mean, there's uh, the, 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 ball, the sport where they throw the ball at each other. It's a good the, time to be a Philadelphia sports oh, fan. Oh, it's so good. The playoff. Listen, the, I, I always try and tell people how important the Phillies are to me. But any picture you see of me as a child is in the vet at the old... Uh, stadium in philadelphia yeah. i grew up going to phillies games holly and i met and went to phillies games like it there's a lot of importance behind this team so seeing the team do good after 11 years there's nothing more important going on in this world i've actually <sighs> skipped going to the parks a few times because games happen yeah well my important. my yankees do not have a fire in their bellies right now everyone thought they were gonna like roll over the 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 I almost said Indians. Oh, almost the Guardians. I at first I was like, who are the Guardians? What the heck? Is I that? did the same thing. I was like, I turned to Holly the other. Day. I was like, who who are the Guardians? Yeah. So the Guardians, not of the galaxy, but the Guardians are the uh, Cleveland baseball team, formerly the Cleveland Indians. No, no longer. So yeah, man, it, it, you just watch the Yankees play. They're so uninspiring. I just I can't I can't do it anymore. They're so frustrating to watch. I, on the other hand, have a team that is very inspiring and keeps doing the come from behind thing. And it's yeah. like, they're the little, they're the little engine that could right now. Well, they're I fired have the up. little engine yeah. that could. They're fired up. They look, there, there is a downside to when you're there almost every year or, or every year is eventually it just becomes a rote and you kind of, there's no incentive. It's like, yeah, we're going to get back here. 
the Yankees have not played inspired baseball for a great many years. They did the year that they lost to the Astros. I want to say like two or three years ago, but then there was the whole scandal that surrounded that whole thing. And I, I think the Yankees really have still, mm. I, I, I don't think they've gotten over major league baseball. I think they're still very mad at major league baseball about the, the way that all that went down. Cause you had the, both the Yankees and the Dodgers that were really victimized by that whole scandal that year. And it was, um, I think it was deflating my man. So let's, let's bring this back to, to Disney. Disney? My <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. How do we equate major league baseball back to Disney? How can you get, can you do six degrees of separation no. to the Yankees, to the Phillies? No, I mean, to, I, I have no <laughs> to desire to do, out? yeah, I have no desire to do mental gymnastics right now, but let's talk about, so here's how we got back to this topic, or here's how we're on this topic. <laughs> Speaking of our incredible Patreons, <laughs> Our very good, uh, our very very good friends over at Walk About the World suggested to us and said, "Hey, hey guys, more food! Give us more food!" And so uh, we have heard the call. Jeremy. Yes, we have heard the call of the people, and we are bringing you a food episode today. So on today's podcast, thanks to our patrons, uh, we are taking a dining detour. And that's the name of this episode today is Dining Detour and talking about top food items and snacks worthy of building the day's plan around. So you see, Greg, some people recommend building their day around rides or parks. Today, we're building our days or our experiences entirely around a singular food item. So you have a list of five food items that are worth the entire day. I have a list of food items that are worth the entire day. Let us compare them. Let us contrast. And like let's, the Hulk, yeah. I am always hungry. <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't like me when I'm hungry. I, I planned everything around food anyway. This was not hard for me to do. So go ahead. I'm sorry. No, no, this is all good. So ladies and gentlemen, here are 10 food items that we are going to provide you with during your next trip. No matter what, you need to plan your day in order to procure all 10 of these items or as many of them as you can. Uh, Greg, you want to tell them the rules for today's exercise? Because we we did set some parameters for this in terms of what food qualifies and what doesn't. Mark, here are the rules. I thought I'd do a game show type thing. Rule number it one. Nice. It has to be quick service, cable service, and kiosks. All of those are fair game. Uh, there's no cheating, by the way. You cannot yeah. bundle multiple uh, menu items. Uh, it has to stand alone as a great item. Yeah, I, that was that I'm, was for me. That was a rule for me. I'm a bundler. I fu- I, I failed. Um, <laughs> Disney Springs was fair game as long as it was uh, not no wait staff. Basically, uh, appetizers, quick service entrees, kiosk offering only. No table service entrees are allowed, but table service appetizers are okay. And that was put in for me, and then I ended up not putting it in there. So maybe it'll go in as an honorable mention. Uh, oh, okay, cool. I found so other things. Yeah. That so were more I important. bent. So we bent the rules for you, and then you wound up being like, "No, nah, I'm cool anyway. I don't even I'm need cool. that rule. I'm cool." Yeah. I'm cool. I'm cool. All right. So let me defer to you first. Since you are the co-hostess with the mostess, I will give you the pole position. You get to go first, man. What is our food item? Give us a description. (laughs) (laughs) See, it's starting off this way already, man. You can tell that we're excited to talk about this because of how happy we are right now. Like this is one of my favorite topics. Give me food any day of the week. I can expand on it as much as I can. So number five. And award wieners is not going to be considered (laughs) here today. So let's just get the giggles out on that one. There will be no award wieners (laughs) on today's food list. Go ahead. I I won't have spicy lips after having that hot dog. (laughs) <laughs> mm, spicy oh lips. there's just so much to there's so much to parse there and i'm just gonna number five go on my top five uh listen so this is a package bundle even though it's not a package it's one thing but you it, it's what it goes along with mark so my number five is going to captain cook's over at the polynesian resort you must get the pulled pork nachos which is pulled pork nachos topped with cheese spicy mayonnaise Paco de Gallo, uh, pineapple salsa, pulled pork. You have to grab those, Mark. And here's the trick. 
You go over there at about eight o'clock at night. Good you tips. grab this menu item. You take it outside. You go to the beach and you enjoy these pulled pork nachos while the fireworks are going off at the Polynesian. It's a good tip, man. I like that. That's a good tip. I have I've heard that tip before. The pulled it's a pork good tip. The pulled pork nachos, I will let you know. I'm gonna I'm gonna tip my my hat a little bit or tip my show my hand a little bit. Uh, I'm also gonna be over at Captain Cook's at one point in my top five as well. Captain Speaking Cook's of tips. Yeah. I thought we weren't gonna talk about war war wieners anymore. So the Captain Cooks could be one of the best. I'm going right by it. Could be one of the best quick service locations on all the property. You're giving them a food item to go and take a detour for in the pulled pork nachos, and I'm going to do it. You know what? Let me just put it here at number five. I would have probably put it higher in terms of what I really enjoy about it. But you know what? Since we're there. Yes, please. Why not at this point? So I'm going to recommend also... From Captain Cook's, the Thai coconut meatballs. These are $10.49. First off, let's just talk about the tremendous value that you're going to get. For $10.49, you have several Thai coconut meatballs. They are served over. And and what are they? They're house-made. They're all beef, chili garlic meatballs. Mm. The flavor on these things are just off the hook good. And then they're cooked in a coconut cream sauce served over white jasmine (coughs) rice. I know these things are, they're amazing. (laughs) I absolutely enjoy them. Whenever I stay at the poly, I get them at least once a day, but I also will make a dining detour no matter what. And I, I will build an entire part of the trip just around this quick service food item. Captain cooks is one of the best, if not the best quick service on all the property Plus, you get all of the benefits of the Polynesian. The lava pool is there. Ohana is there. Uh, You have Aloha Isle, and you can get Dole Whip. You can watch the fireworks from the beach. The vibe is off the hook. Trader Sam's Grog Grotto. Trader Sam's, yes. You cannot go wrong with the Poly, but these two dining items are worth taking a detour just for that. If there was nothing else at the Poly, those pulled pork nachos, I can attest, very good. But the Thai coconut meatballs are my pick from the Polynesian. Captain Cook's literally could be the best quick service place Breakfast for how dinner. small it is. Uh, not only that, but one thing we do over at Chip and Company is that is where we go get the special cupcakes that they are bringing out all the time. So it's not just the real food that we get there. It's yeah. also the desserts. It's the vibe of the place. It's sitting outside where the, the, uh, right by out the outdoors of Trader Sam's where the waterfall is. It's just beautiful. It's a wonderful place to hang out. So, I mean, how can we go wrong there? And I'm going to go to, to number four. Well, and also sorry to offend cupcakes out there in the world. You are real food. We see you. We hear you. We apologize for Greg calling you not real food. Please, those sentiments do not reflect those here at Diz Life Podcast. We do agree, Cupcakes. You are real food. And we're very sorry for having canceled you. Speaking of Cupcakes, Mark, do you have any guess how much money we spent last year on Cupcakes? Just a just a weird so vibe guess. I'm going to go. It's somewhere probably between a lot and uh, a second mortgage. I, I'm going to say it is more than you would even think of. Uh, $6,000 on in just one cupcakes? Year. Uh, and I'm not even, there, there, there is no exaggeration. On just cupcakes? Just cupcakes. And you just called them not real food? You need to rethink your life. That's how important <laughs> cupcakes are. They are to very, us. They're very <laughs> yeah, it was it's re, you have to report on every new one you have to get. Like but I all the cakes, all the sweets, all the cupcake. Oh man. And yeah, Captain Cooks just has so it much frosting. <laughs> so <laughs> much for, I'm wondering why I'm having diabetes. How, I was just gonna say, like, your sugar must be off the charts bad. Well, here's one of the problems, and I love this, is uh, we will actually eat the cupcake instead of throwing it in the garbage. Um, so <laughs> I, I have you to do. eat them, Mark. 
I, it's it's a cruel. She's a cruel mistress, Mark. Six thousand cupcakes consumed here at Chip and Company. Uh, Every number four. I am going over to. I'm going to skip down one. I'm going to go to uh, Disney's Animal Kingdom Lodge, Mark. Um, I think it's in Jamba House. It is the Mara. The Mara has some amazing food in there. A lot of uh, African-inspired dishes. A lot of Indian-inspired dishes also. We, both of us, were going to go to Sanaa, but I decided to go to the Mara instead. And it's the Marrakesh falafel platter, which is cucumber, tomato salad, hummus, tahini sauce served with pita bread, and you get the uh, plant-based falafel so good they have that nice crisp exterior if you ha- get the sauce that comes with it it is divine dip it in it's almost like a couscous it comes with you dip all of it together you mm. eat it with your hands i'm a fan mm, of the couscous I love it it's the food so nice they named it twice thank you couscous couscous uh, it's, so yeah, yeah the mara is my number one i i i talked to holly and i was like what I need to go to the Mara. She's like, for what? I'm like the yeah. falafel balls. I love falafel <laughs> balls. <laughs> the second, yes. The second balls that have made are top 10. Mm, Meatballs balls. and falafel balls. Love the balls. And still not a single item from award wieners. I can't believe it. Hard to believe. Cause, it's because we get spicy lips. It's you get spicy lips. All right. No <laughs> spicy lips from my number four. That is the brisket sandwich over at the Regal Eagle Smokehouse in Epcot. I'm going to tell you this. When they went from whatever that monstrosity was at the American Quick Service and when they re-envisioned or reimagined it as the Regal Eagle Smokehouse, whoever made that decision, give that guy a raise because it went from, no joke, probably being the worst Quick Service Mm -hmm. (laughs) on property to being the one that I I will detour an entire vacation to make sure that I have at least one lunch at the Regal Eagle Smokehouse. And in my opinion, while their entire menu is delicious, for me, it's always the brisket sandwich at Regal Eagle. It is $13.79. Yeah, that's an awkward price. I don't know why they decided on 79 cents. I'd have to figure that one out. But what you get is a brisket They rub the brisket with whatever their secret rub is. It's slow smoked. And then they place the brisket, which is just so succulent. It's so delicious. It falls apart. They put it between, Greg, garlic toast. So it's between Texas toast. And then you get to get it served with a a side of your choice. We either go with the mac and cheese or the watermelon. But the sandwich... You can top with whatever they have several. You've talked about this numerous times. They have several types of barbecue sauce depending on the region. So they've got like KC style. They have like North Carolina barbecue sauce. You know, the stuff that's really vinegar based for the stuff that's really saucy. And you can choose what barbecue sauce you want to have. And it honestly does change the whole presentation of the sandwich depending on what regional sauce you put on it. But even without the sauce... This sandwich is bonkers, man. I have what I always call the moment when I eat this, where I take a bite. And you know how every cell in your body, every fiber of your being just goes, ugh. You take a bite of this sandwich and you are sad. You, you describe this as, I'm very satisfied with my care. I'm, um, I'm, I'm actually really satisfied that you use the word rubbed and succulent in the same sentence. It's true. I'm really, I'm so happy with that one. You have, uh, uh, I take the barbecue sauce and then I pour it all over the sandwich and then I have like four or five other sauces that I can dip in also. Yeah. So every bite gets the most amount of barbecue. It, it basically is a way of just pouring. I might as well just be doing shots of barbecue. Just two shots of barbecue sauce and it's fine. No judgment here on my part. With, like with cool the with sandwich in the background. And then I get the fries so I can dip more. Yeah. Or you do the a classic Pittsburgh thing and you throw the fries on top of the sandwich. Now, I know I'm not going to get any hate from you on this food item because you and I are very much in agreement. We've sat down and broken bread at this location. And we've both kind of just sat there and said, man, this place is bonkers good. Regal Eagle Smokehouse, it's always packed. But again, because it's a quick service, 
even when it's very busy, you can mobile order, you can get in and out. And I'll tell you, a lot of people will circumvent it because it's there all of the time. But if you don't go to Disney a lot, you have to detour an entire trip just to go to Regal Eagle Smokehouse. It's and bonkers. you get to eat with the Muppets and Sam the Eagle. Sam Eagle. It's a tribute to all types of dining, <laughs> but mostly American. American. Mostly barbecue and get the sauce. A tribute to all sorts of culinary styles, but mostly barbecue. Thank you, Sam Eagle. Uh, we will be moving on. I, I man, you. Here's the problem. Now I'm getting really, really. I am Martin. too. We're recording this around dinner time as uh, well, which was a horrible idea. What are you having tonight? Uh, we're gonna have homemade chicken pot pie tonight. Oh, yeah. Oh, it, and I'm sure it's like a nice brisk night up there. Homemade crust. It is. We are. We are in Ooh. the peak of foliage right now. Fall is abound here in northeastern Pennsylvania. This wow. is the time of year I don't mind living in this area. I do like a crisp <laughs> fall day. So, so my halfway next, there, number three, my number three is going to be, I'm so pull, I'm, 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 it's pulling me one way. I'm like going the other pork? way. Yes. Uh, I'm, it, but this time I'm going to go with more beef, but I'm going to Satuli Canteen at Disney's Animal Kingdom Pandora. Uh, I always get the grilled beef and chicken noodle bowl. Yes, I would uh, have been shocked if this wasn't on your. I, I, if this wasn't on your list, I would have been completely and totally shocked. We I, we have actually eaten together as families over at Sotuli Canteen, and you have seen my contentment while eating this. I have hot and take. Linda does not so like good. these at all. That's okay. She's allowed her opinion. She is. It, she's it allowed to be wrong, wrong right? But yeah. she's she is a she is a grown woman who has an opinion. <laughs> It's wrong, but she's <laughs> so wrong. The combination grilled beef and chicken, uh, ro- slow roasted sliced grilled beef marinated in a blend of garlic herbs, red pepper spice, and red vinegar, red wine vinegar paired with wood grilled chicken thighs marinated in garlic and olive oil topped with a crunchy vegetable slaw and a boba balls served with your choice of uh, base our sauce, I go with noodles, and I go with the uh, creamy herb sauce. And you ask for a little extra creamy herb sauce on the side. That way, if you just in case you need that mwah, little chef's little kiss extra, on top of it. Yeah, there you go. Not only that, but Satuli Canteen, the vibe of that place. If you are an Avatar fan, if you enjoy living in the world of Pandora. And the you theme are is, an actual I, Avatar fan. There's not many actually, of you, but you are an actual fan. Um. Yeah, but hey, look, well, you disagree with that out. statement? Whoa, 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 no, 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 no. Okay. I disagree with the, the the verbiage you used of "I am a fan," meaning that there's many not fans out there. No, it's and, not that. I just don't think a lot of people. If you ask them what do they know about Avatar, they're like, "Oh, the Blue People movie." Yeah, that's so cool. They can't name a single character. They don't know Natiri. They have no idea. Like you say, Jake Sully, and they're like, "Who is that?" Jake Sully. Jake Sully. They don't know characters from Avatar. They just know it's, oh, yeah, the blue people, the 3D blue people in space. Look, we're fans enough that we could actually sing the song to end shows anymore, oh, which is yeah, amazing. Wow. End the show. So, end the, end show. the show. Yeah, we did. We did that. We absolutely did it. Um, yeah, it's a totally canteen. Look, the whole vibe. I love the place. Uh, you buy one drink, free refills for hours. You can sit there and <laughs> on a hot day, just keep refilling your cup full of ice and drinks. But it comes down to it's that combination bowl. Man, it's it's so I'm surprised though that you didn't put that higher on your list. That must have hurt to let that slide all the way down to three for you. No, because I have better. Okay. Disney Animal Kingdom can be a little rough to get in and out of. So I was like, oh, what Ooh. would I go for before that? And so I have answers. All right. And uh, I have, I know you have answers. So this one, I'm actually going to lament falling down to three for me uh, because it could on any given day be number one. I almost cheated with this one because this is coming from a table service restaurant. There are waiters, there's wait staff. But this was that appetizer loophole that we put in there for you for Sanaa. Mm. And then I retracted it and I, and I took advantage of it. So you didn't take advantage of that loophole and I did. So this is an appetizer, but I'm going to tell you this right now. You can just make this a meal. It's $17, but it is such a filling and satisfying appetizer from Chef Art Smith's homecoming. 
that you don't need to order an entree. Trust me, just get the thigh high chicken biscuits at Chef Art Smith's Homecoming. It's not an appetizer, it is a religious experience. And I say that with every ounce of it, there's truth to it. There is, I'm not being sarcastic. These things are so amazing. It's three biscuits. They're topped with Chef Art Smith's famous fried chicken thighs. Uh, there are bread and butter pickles that are on top of it. So it's very simple in terms of presentation. They're not topped with a ton of, of stuff. They're not very saucy. It's just biscuits, amazing chicken, butter pickles, and then there is a drizzling, not inundated with hot honey that just give you a good enough touch of spice that's not overpowering. This is another one of those bites. You take a bite of these biscuits and you just go, Ugh. you let out like so, a guttural grunt of, oh man, these are so good. And you just shake your head and you kind of like wag your finger in the air and go, God, Thank you for this food today because this is like, this is amazing right now. It is country cooking, down home cooking, simple. Mm. And, and the presentation is so simple and man, I don't know what it is about these things, but thigh high chicken biscuits. I, I dare you. I dare you to say no to these. I do. Can I just say I'm happy that you said bite of these biscuits bite in almost a wrestling style. You're like, you better get a bite of these biscuits, brother. Oh, yeah. Nice guy. I heard really nice guy. Well, I was doing Macho Man Randy Savage. He was also another nice guy. I didn't say anything else about anybody else. I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, Shepard Smith's homecoming. Uh, on top of that, I, I know I'm not at, I'm adding to your list. Have you ever tried the uh, deviled eggs over there? Uh, I, I don't, I don't participate in anything that is satanic, Craig. <laughs> oh yeah, Miss Elizabeth. <laughs> you just threw me. I literally was like, I have my brain got stunned. <laughs> uh, by the way, I, while you were talking, um, I did go back to the original, what we broke the rules for. Yes. I took out what we had doubled and, uh, changed it because it really is the number one thing. So, oh, 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 so oh, you're, yeah. you're just like, yeah. you know, changing on the, the entire, fly. yeah, changing the entire show on the fly. The hey, whole show. All Look, good. I'm, right. I'm at number two and I will get to number one, which deserve this deserves to be number one, even though both of us had the same thing. Okay. I'm going this other way. Uh, my number four, Mark, again, number two, you number two. Have, what did working, I say? Did I say number you said four? four? We're working to the top. You're, <laughs> You're adding another half hour to the show needlessly. Why can I not figure out number patterns? You really cannot, man. And I, I don't know, but I'm here for it. And I'm here for you. I to, appreciate to your keep you in line. Right. Thank you. Number two. Uh, number two, letter seven is over at. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so and you lost it. And you lost it. <laughs> Numerically, you were right there. You were I at the there. doorstep. Why did I you turn not the handle of the door? You were ready to walk through and you dropped it. You just uh, dropped it. <laughs> Mark, my number two, uh, you and I have broken bread here also. Uh, 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 when it got changed over from Boardwalk Bakery over to oh. the Boardwalk Deli, I am going with the Boardwalk Deli at Boardwalk Resorts on Disney's Boardwalk. I'm not going for your normal sandwich, though. Mark. I know what you're doing. I, I know what you're doing. I'm here with for you. For my personal favorite sandwich. This thing's bonkers, dude. I know where not you're like going. Not that, but I will drop everything during a certain time of year, which I'm about to announce, um, and just go, Holly. I'll be back or I'll go, Hey, would you like to go break some bread with me? And she'll be like, I'm working. And I'll be like, I'll be back. Or she'll just go over with me. I don't know. However it works. Um, the gobbler sandwich, Mark. <laughs> That's a very interesting way of, of putting it. Out. Go ahead, man. <laughs> Just gonna let you continue with this. I don't know where you're going Thank with you. it. Go ahead. Uh, the turkey gobbler sandwich from the boardwalk. I know a lot of people want to talk about how amazing Earl of Sandwich is. Yes, Earl of Sandwich is good. Yes, Wawa is amazing. But there's something about 
served on a warm chipotle roll, features oven roasted turkey, the cornbread stuffing with turkey graving and a cranberry mayonnaise, uh, ten forty nine, and this sandwich is almost too much to ingest at one time, just like a turkey dinner would be. Yeah, when you are done noshing on the gobbler, right out, it 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 just sits on you. The trip to the pan hits you. Content yep. and happiness. I will normally go take this over to the boardwalk and sit outside on the lo- the lawn they have or up in the balcony and just enjoy the scenery, enjoy the people coming around me. I will normally get an adult beverage at that point and just not move for another hour enjoying this food coma. And as a side note or an aside, even if you don't get this sandwich, this turkey gobbler sandwich, it's not the old... Uh, It's not the old Italian. It has been changed, but it's still really good. The Italian sandwich that they have at the the new Boardwalk Deli is really good. And we also had a chance to try the Reuben. And the Reuben... I'm imagining the Reuben on your honorable mentions because that thing is also incredible. It should have been. Yeah. The Boardwalk Deli, let's just say as a location, not just that food item, the Boardwalk Deli is worth taking a dining detour for period at the end of the day, even if you're not staying at the boardwalk, if you're in Epcot, take a detour, leave the park, go out the international gateway. Trust us. This is a detour that you will not regret. I know it's, it's hard to do when you've got all of the food booths that are right there. You have all of the, the world showcase that is like right there at your feet. And you want to just go to all of the different booths. Trust us this one time, take a dining detour, Go to the Boardwalk Deli. You will not regret that decision. Dude, that's a great number two. That's a really good number two. I'm satisfied with my number two. Because, I listen, I would leave I would leave my house and just go, I, I'm going to go to the Boardwalk. It's not yeah. as easy to park there, but if you could mobile order pre in, in advance, you can find parking over there. They'll allow you to park. Yep. Uh, but, yeah, leave Epcot. Leave your hotel. Take Just get over there, and I, I promise you – it's going to be just take two hours out of your life and go have this sandwich. I'm going to tell you this right now. I had such a hard time deciphering between my number two and my number one people who know me best. I know a lot of people are new to Diz life podcast here on the chip and company podcast network, but the Diz lifers who have been with us since episode one, the community members and the fans would be shocked if one, if not both of these were not at my, my top two, they know that this isn't me just picking for a list or me, you know, there's no bluster here. I'm going to tell you, I have two food items that I always will make a detour for no matter what I'm doing. You have seen this. Mark, could times. you sell this to me as Macho Man Randy Savage? Oh yeah, brother. So I'm walking through the French pavilion and I'm getting off of Remy's Ratatouille, brother. I just got shrunk back to the size of a human being. And my hunger is great. And I'm about to come down off of the top rope and drop the elbow. And Miss Elizabeth, I'm going to put her on my shoulder and hold her up with the WWE Championship belt. But before I do that, brother, I'm going over to the ice cream store. I'm going over to La Artisan de Glaces in France, brother. And I'm going to get me a $7 seasonal ice cream macaroon, brother. You can get yourself chocolate, but I'm getting me the seasonal flavor. (laughs) Thank you, Mark. Thank you for making my day. That was so good, brother. The seasonal ice cream macaroon. All joking aside, thank you so much, Macho Man Randy Savage. The seasonal ice cream macaroon. Shout out and props go to Ali and to Piano Rob. They were the ones that introduced me to this thing over two years ago. It changed my life. They have a raspberry seasonal macaroon this time of year. It is something truly spectacular. They always have chocolate and then they change out the seasonal For the holiday, it will become peppermint again. But right now, usually from about midsummer through to the fall, there is a raspberry macaroon ice cream sandwich that is so amazing and it's so good. That ice cream shop might be the best ice cream shop on all the property. A lot of people know the ice cream sandwich. 
That is oh. in between the, yeah, that's in between the brioche bun. Also very good. But I'm going to tell you right now, my go-to item, and people know this, is that raspberry ice cream macaroon. Um, it is a little expensive. It's $7. But you know what? I will swallow that price for a bite of this ice cream. And you've been with me. And if that place is closed, what happens to my affect? What happens to my mood? If we're there walking- is depression, like l- literal depression, where there will be a few moments of contemplating why I am in this park this day because this is the reason I'm here. Correct. I've literally witnessed this, people. You've seen it. Like I've I've gone from a twelve down to a two when I walk over and it's it's not there's open. sadness when it's not open. There is so much sadness. Hello, darkness, my old friend. Come on, Greg. And- let's go home. and i have to sit there and you know how hard it is to be come on brother we're gonna go over there and we're gonna get the belt back and we're gonna win it's like it's almost like you got hit with an atomic leg drop it's sad yeah it's it's sad look i agree um i i'm i'm before i go on i must say thank you for using the words brioche bun um, brioche it just sounds fun just fun would you like the brioche all right Uh, holly agrees with you I have her in over in one side, like the, if you could see on the screen, there's a little hand talking. Yes. Um, she goes, uh, that was actually going to be her number two also. She I go Lady like, Gaga for that. Yeah. It is so good. I am not a fan of all things. I, I and know. I don't know why. Maybe it's the biting into an ice cream. I, I think well, I have a problem with biting into an ice cream. Well, to be fair, you also have not had the raspberry seasonal. You cannot do raspberry. You have an allergy cannot. to it. So you have been, uh, you have been forced to just have the chocolate. The chocolate is just okay. I've been forced to be angry at this place for serving. The I know. Raspberry. Yeah, I know. It's okay. And that's man. okay. It's, it's a personal thing. Um, but I absolutely, Holly is agreeing with you. So if she agrees with you. I agree with you. Drum roll, my friend. We have reached the summit of the mountain. Your number one dining detour, meaning this is the number one item that no matter what, you will derail an entire day to make sure that you get. Greg, a lot of pressure here. What is your number one food item that you're willing to detour for no matter what you're doing? Mark, I don't even have jokes to add to this because this one is very serious. Folks. No cap. I am... <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I totally, it's, it's, I, I destroyed the moment. Sorry. <laughs> Go ahead. Try and Mark, like for once I was going to be the serious guy. Go ahead. Come on. You couldn't my... give me just two no, seconds to be a serious yeah, guy. Yeah, that's right. on me. <clears throat> and break. Over at Disney's Animal Kingdom Lodge, all of a sudden escaped to me what building that's in. Mark, what is that building over there? Kidani House? Over at Kadani Village at Animal Kingdom Lodge, there is a small restaurant downstairs called Sana. Um, now, I know it, that is a full table service menu. There were rules, Greg. Uh, there is a wait staff, but you can get this to go. So that's how I'm breaking the rules. The Indian-style bread service. There is no better, except for Mark's number one, um, there is nothing more on this earth i would leave my house quicker for is if somebody went hey would you like the indian bread that's me screeching right, yeah have tire screeching this sentence indian style bread service five breads with nine accompaniments 10 if you know the secret one uh you get traditional naan garlic ginger naan spiced naan onion coca uh or Paneer paratha yeah, yeah. accompaniments is cucumber ri- riata, uh, roasted red pepper, hummus, magno chutney, tomato date jam. Oh, that's so my jam. I'm not even kidding you. Like, it, oh, tamarind chutney, coriander chutney, garlic pickle, red chili sambal, and a spicy jalapeno lime pickle. And then you could ask for the secret sauce, Mark. Very and saucy. The secret sauce is very, very saucy. But if you mix it with the cucumber, oh, Oh, it's so good. Listen, first off, you're not jo- dining, you're not kidding. Yeah, I mean, dining with friends is very important and you and I have used the term breaking bread. When you are with friends, this is the ultimate breaking bread. Whether it's with your family or with your friends, you realize how important in certain cultures just breaking a piece of bread and handing it to somebody else and how much of an experience it could be. This is what 
Sina and the Indian Bread Service does. Please, you must get over there. Stop everything you want. I, I don't care if you sit there at table service. You don't have to take it to go. You take it to go. You go eat out on the uh, uh, over with all the animals on the Savannah View. It's spectacular, Mark. I I can bloviate on this one dish for a long time and talk about how you mix spices together. Uh, I can also tell you about just drinking the tomato date jam. That is so good. Uh, you have also talked about this place and how great it is. And you just stayed at Kidani Village. So what are your thoughts? So I have to agree. Uh, I, I just did Sanaa for the first time this summer. The bread service over at Sanaa is something that is truly remarkable. And the only regret that I have with this food item was we split it as a table. And I should have had Linda just get her own naan. I should have got mine because we were, we were kind of like fighting over the bread. Now, the d- d- very definition of breaking bread, Linda and I kind of, we negated it. So it's biblical. It's actually from the New Testament. FYI, again, I'm a history. I didn't want to go biblical, but yeah. you, you're, you're an educated man on these things. No, but this is, it, it's from biblical times to share or to break bread. It was hard to remain enemies when you shared your dining table with them. And it has continued to have meaning throughout the ages that it's, you, we first see instances of breaking bread in the New Testament And then throughout the course of history, uh, there was a lot of diplomacy that was conducted around a dining table. And when you broke bread with your adversary, it was seen as a sign of of gesture and of goodwill. There's a lot of connections, of course, to the Eucharist. Uh, We don't need to get into all of that here. But uh, Linda and I sort of, uh, we, we negated the, the concept of breaking bread because we were like at odds over grabbing at, at the non Linda is now addicted to non. We get non here every week as a result yes. of, of the, the same uh, of that, that Sanaa experience. But, uh, that is worth every bit of the detour to just drive over to Sanaa and you've got to commit to it. Let's, let's also be very honest about this. If there was a dining detour, it would be Sanaa because it's not at the Jumbo House. It, it's at Kidani Village and it's a DVC resort. There really is not much there for you to do outside of Sanaa. But let me tell you this, it is worth every bit of that detour and a very good number one pick, man. I support you and salute Thank you. you I, I am sorry that you and Linda are having marital problems over breaking bread. I, this is how we're good. good. Yeah, we're are good you? now. Yeah, I do know a good therapist, or I can give you my emotional support chicken. No, he's a therapizer. Ooh. Hey, what's up, chicken? Just don't choke him. All right, ladies and gentlemen, my number one nope. dining detour. Drum roll, please. Roll right by that. Pay no mind. <laughs> Boom. Number <laughs> one. Worst drum roll ever. That was a pretty bad drum roll. But it's the Ronto Rap, ladies and gentlemen. Woo! If you That's know me, <laughs> if you know me, you know. <laughs> Sorry, I was New Year's Eve. The chicken also loves the Ronto Rap because it's pork. <laughs> That's why the chicken is so happy about the Ronto Rap. Chicken. He's like, I'm not on the menu. Hallelujah. <laughs> So the Ronto wrap is roasted. Oh my God, my dogs are going nuts. I'm sorry. I'm going to go put my uh, chicken away. Yeah, before. go do that. Uh, the you. Ronto wrap is roasted pork, grilled pork sausage, peppercorn sauce, and a tangy slaw that's all wrapped in a grilled pita bread. It's $12.49. Again, very cost effective. Uh, these things are amazing. Usually the only regret that I have with the Ronto wrap is my eyes are bigger than my stomach and I want to get a second one, but I also know that I probably wouldn't get through a second Ronto wrap, but I get this. I don't care what time of day it is. And I'm going to give you a little bit of a hot take. Weak sauce. Do not get the breakfast style Ronto wrap. Mm. You need to, I don't care what time of day it is, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. You need to get the traditional Ronto wrap. It is polarizing. Some people have gotten the Ronto wrap and they didn't quite dig it. But I'm telling you right now, that is the number one dining detour. It's exotic. It's great. You get this Batusian food item. 
It looks like it's from another planet, and it is out of this world good. If Ronto Roasters is closed, Greg, because Ronto Roaster is only open for breakfast and lunch, at dinner time, pro tip, you can go to Docking Bay 7, and they serve and sell Ronto wraps for dinner. So you can get them now, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. That is my number one. Anyone who knows me, at my very core, could their dislifers be anything but the Ronto wrap at the top of my list? No way. Oh, all those words are so wonderful alone, and together they make a wonderful sentence. <laughs> they do. Uh, thank you again to Jeremy for this idea. It has been a while since we took a little bit of a detour and we did dining. Jeremy is also the creator of the Disney Dining Deep Dives, where we do the Quad D. Guy Fieri has three Ds. We have four here at Dislike Podcast. <laughs> <laughs> we do Disney Dining Deep Dives. So stay tuned for another you didn't episode. Just say that, did you? I did. Stay tuned. We for- have four D. <laughs> stay tuned. Another Disney Dining Deep Dive coming up very soon in the near future. Greg, good luck to your Phillies this week. And uh, you have a little bit of, you want to tell people you have a little bit of a stay coming up this week? I Mark, I get to go to Disney Vero B. Okay. Uh, first off, since the episode is coming out this week, um, I want to take a moment and I hope you will oblige me here. Uh, happy birthday to my amazing, spectacular, beautiful, smart, beyond words uh, daughter who turned 16 on Wednesday. Man. 16 mark like I and i don't know why this one is hitting me so hard she is a mini version of me she a good is a kid man a great kid she I, I i wish i could say how amazing and how fun she is to hang out with uh, a lot of people go through issues with their teenage kids i do not i have a teenage kid who is just amazing and thoughtful and thinks so much of other people and is wonderful. So thank you for giving me this time. I just want to say happy birthday, Rory. Happy 16th birthday. Uh, for her birthday, Chip got her uh, a stay for two nights at Disney's Vero Beach down here at Vero Beach, Florida. So we're going to go down to Florida. Um, go down to Florida. I live in Florida. I'm going to go down to the ocean, uh, Mark. And you know what the cruel mistress of the sea can be? Uh, it's going to be the coldest day in Florida. Arr, she's a cold mistress, Greg. You know what I love most about now this entire year for you and for Roar? What is that? Is you can wake up every day and you know what you can do, right? You can What's say, that, you wait, little girl, on an empty stage for fate to turn the light on. Your life, little girl, is an empty page that men will want to write on, to write on. You are 16, going on 17, baby. It's time to think. You get to sing that every day now. Now I have to learn the actual lyrics. I just knew the chorus. Sound of music. I know. So Um, every day I expect Rory to be serenaded with 16 going on 17. You don't think I won't? I I know you will. will. That's why I threw that out there. Yeah. So anyway, happy birthday, Roy. I, I, I can't say enough. Your parents are very proud of you and we love you. And thank you, Mark, for giving me the time to uh, talk about her. Yes. Happy birthday to Rory. Thank you so much, everyone, for hanging out with our dining detours here. Again, smash that subscribe button. We have amazing content all week long coming at you with five podcasts a week here on the Chip and Company Podcast Network. Have a wonderful Monday. We hope that the rest of the day is filled with faith, trust, and pixie dust chicken take us out oh he's singing the sound of music dis life podcast is brought to you by the happiness is addictive collection Happiness is Addictive is passionate about spreading laughter and creating smiles worldwide. They love bringing their global community together through optimism, cheer, hopefulness, merriment, and celebrating life's magical moments. They know how important it is to celebrate life's adventures, and their apparel will give you everlasting, one-of-a-kind memories through pixie-dusted family photos, compliments from park guests, and magical moments with cast members. They pride themselves on high-quality, custom-made apparel at competitive prices with world-class service. 
Let them help you create a lifetime of memories, whether you're Disney bounding, kicking it poolside, participating in run Disney marathons, having costumed adventures, or just living your best Disney life. You can find their Happiness is Addictive shop on Etsy. You can also find them on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, Twitter, and Pinterest. They are proud to be featured in Indie Central Florida, the Thoughtful Gift Club, and now here on Diz Life Podcast. Their collection was founded by a 15-year former cast member who knows how to enhance your magical moments for a lifetime of memories with your family. Don't forget to use promo code DISLIFE15 to take an extra 15% off. What are you waiting for? Head over to Etsy and start getting happy today. Follow the link in our show notes and you'll find out for yourself that happiness is addictive. <laughs> 